What a great reminder this morning to be thankful in everything. Stand with us if you're able this morning. Let's thank and praise our Savior. Here we go. Searching the world, the lost will be found. In freedom we live, as one we cry out. You carried the cross, you died and rose again. My God, I'll only ever give my all. You sent your son from heaven to earth. You delivered us all, it's eternally heard. I search for truth, and all I found was you. My God, I'll only ever give my all. Jesus, we're living for your name. We'll never be ashamed of you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll praise and all we are today. Take, take, take it all. Take, take, take it all. Here we go. You sent your son. You sent your son from heaven to earth. You delivered us all. It's eternally heard. I searched for truth, and all I found was you, my God, I'll only ever give my all. Jesus, we're living for your name, we'll never be ashamed of you. Whoa, oh, oh, I'll praise, and I'll be on a day. Take, take, take it all, take, take, take it all. Jesus, we're living for your name, we'll never be ashamed of you. Whoa, oh, oh, I'll praise, and I'll be on a day. Running to the one who heals the blind, following the shining light. In your hands the power to save the world in my life. Running to the one who heals the blind, following the shining light. In your hands the power to save the world in my life. Jesus, we're living for your name. We'll never be ashamed of you. Whoa, oh, oh, I'll praise and all we are today. Take, take, take it all. Take, take, take it all. Jesus, we're living for your name. We'll never be ashamed of you. Oh, 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 I'll praise and all we are today. Take, take, take it all. Take, take, take one more time. Jesus, we're living for your name. We'll never be ashamed of you. Light in the darkness, you are hope for the hopeless. You are the God who never fails. You are full of compassion. You are full of compassion. You are love everlasting. You are the God who never fails. And through it all, your love never changes. And through it all, there is nothing to Your name will lift in a higher, your glory I desire. Your praise will sing forever, our great God, our great God. Whoa, no strength, no power greater, no equal to our Savior. You're the name above all others, our great God, our great God. Whoa, you are life and freedom. Our life and freedom, we will live for your kingdom, for all the world to know your name. Yeah, yeah, oh, you are strong through the ages, our song of all generations, our mighty God has come to save. And through it all, your love never changes. Through it all, there is nothing. Your name will lift in a higher, your glory I desire. 
Your praise will sing forever. Our great God, our great God. Whoa, no strength, no power greater. No equal to our Savior. You're the name above all others. Our great God, our great God. Whoa. All our hope has been fulfilled, death exchange for life. Perfect love has been revealed, our God is alive. All our hope has been fulfilled, death exchange for life. Perfect love has been revealed, our God is alive. Your name will lift in a higher, your glory I desire. Your praise will sing forever, our great God, our great God. Whoa, no strength, no power greater, no equal to our Savior. Your name above all others, our great God, our great God. Whoa. Take a minute and greet the people around you. Give a handshake, a high five, or a hug. Awesome thing it is to see you guys love on each other this morning. I'm going to read from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are his people, the flock under his care.
You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stay. Oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't stop now and I
you for the time of fellowship that we had between services today. We got to talk to one another, see what's going on, commiserate with each other. Thank you for people like Nick and Sarah, who, like the last song we just sang, are showing their faithfulness and obedience to you, Lord, and you're calling out upon the waters. May you protect them and guide them as they uh, embark on their adventure, bringing the word of Jesus Christ to other parts of the world. Thank you, Lord, for our earth, our home, for all the birds in the sky and all the fish in the sea. Thank you for allowing us to enjoy all the things that you have provided for us. Thank you for all the seasons we enjoy, for each new dawn is filled with endless possibilities for new discoveries and new beginnings. Let each new day be a beginning with you. Thank you for this church and the people in it. Thank you for the building that is underway. May it all be done in a manner used that forever glorify your name. May all we do and say reflect in the glory there is in you. And it is in holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. Well, today is a special day for us as a church. It's Harvest Fest Sunday. And so for those who may be visiting us, this is something that we do every year, every fall. What's a little different about this year is that in the past, we've done it Sunday night. We've taken a Sunday night and had one service, and we thought that it was special enough. We were going to try it on a Sunday morning. And so we have two regular services. We had some great goodies between services, but if you weren't here, I'm sorry you missed out. You snooze, you lose. But it was really good. But it's a time when we come uh, to give thanks to God for his blessing and to, to give to important causes. So if you're a visitor with us today, don't worry about that. This is kind of a church family thing. We're just glad to have you here today. But let me just say our offering today is 20, our goal is $21,000 divided three ways. It's kind of what we would call an Acts 1-8 offering. It talks about where to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. Well, our Jerusalem part of the offering has to do with the new building. We wanted to make sure we got the building up so we didn't put a lot of frills in it, like kitchen equipment. And so this goes towards the new kitchen to be able to expand ministry the sooner the better. The Judea Samaria part is Lake Beauty Bible Camp. That's an important ministry for us as a church. We partner here at, in um, Wilmer with Lake Beauty, and so that's with our kids, with our youth, with our adults. They're starting a great discipleship program for young people, and that's coming up here very soon, so we're excited about that. And the ends of the earth is our Covenant World Relief offering. I know a number of you have had Covenant World Relief banks that you've been putting in. Uh, there we go. Rocky's got his. Go, hold it up, Rocky, to shake it. There you go. And Covenant World Relief is, is that arm of the Covenant Church that reaches out to the ends of the earth to the, those who need it most, the poor, the unfortunate, the, the beaten, the hurting, the bruised. And currently, that means a lot of people in the Philippines. Just last weekend, we know a cyclone went through. 10,000 people, they're estimating, were killed. And so we have four churches in the Philippines, and we want to make a difference with those people. So that's what the offering is going towards with Covenant World Relief. This morning, it's going to be a processional offering. The ushers will come forward and have you come through the middle and out to both sides. We've got three different places here, our regular offering. I know that kind of looks like a planter, but it's really an offering plate. It's just kind of a fancy offering plate. And then the one to the other side is the harvest offering, and then you can put your cans in the middle, and it's the same for both sides. Um, I think a number of our kids are gone, but those kids that are still around first through sixth grade, you could leave after the offering just in case your folks want you to come up. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Lord, we love you, and we want to thank you. You've been so good to us, and it's not that we deserve it, but that's what grace is about, and that's what your 
love is about toward us. You never give up on us. You continue to hang with us, and you sent Jesus to save us. Well, Lord, we are here today on Harvest Fest Sunday to simply say thank you. Thank you for your grace and goodness. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for providing over and above all of our needs. And as we give this offering today, we want to do it for your glory, for your honor. And we want to do it as a way of saying we are sharing our resources with those who don't have anything so that they can be helped in the name of Jesus. Bless the giver and the gift for your glory and honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives For you're our joy and prize To see the captive's hearts released Let's hurt the sick, the poor at peace We lay down our lives for heaven's cause We are your church And we pray revive this earth Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and lands. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church, and we are the whole on earth. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and lands. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We Please be seated. Well, today, 
We're having the third and final message in our series entitled Strapped. Let's begin by doing a little review. We are to put God first in our lives by serving Him, not our money. We serve God with our money. Our key verse for this series has been Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Well, hopefully by now, we have all made the decision that we are not going to be strapped like everybody else around us. We have come to realize that the borrower is a servant or a slave and is in bondage to the lender. We're tired. We're tired of being in bondage. So we're going to unstrap ourselves. We're going to get out of debt. We're going to give up some of the things we love for some of the things that we love even more. And we're going to come up with a plan to remove our debt. If you really do want to get out of debt, the key is you need to do it God's way. And God's way is putting God first with your money. We call that tithing. Tithing is God's way of helping you put Him first in your life. Just so we're all clear and all on the same page, tithing is returning the first 10% of your income to God. Leviticus 27 says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether the, from the grain, from the soil, or the fruit, fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Notice that it's returning the first 10% to the Lord. That's because everything that we have belongs to God. When we give to God, we're really giving back part of what belongs to Him in the first place. The Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Sometimes we forget that. We think that our stuff is our stuff. But it doesn't belong to us. And a tithing helps us to remember who all of our stuff really belongs to. See, every time I write my tithe check, I'm saying my stuff belongs to God. And notice what this verse says. God sees our tithe as much more than money. The tithe is holy to the Lord. It's an act of worship on our part. Tithing is the most tangible act of worship that we could ever give to God. Not singing, not praising, not serving, but tithing. Tithing is giving God your first and your best. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Your vats will brim over with new wine. See, when you put God first in your giving, God is first in your life. When you put money first in your life, money has become your God. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, in the Old Testament, when God's people would bring sacrifices and offerings to the temple, they were the best cuts of meat. They were the unblemished lambs. That's because God deserves only our best. Tithing means that you give God the first, not the leftovers. Because as we all know, when it comes to money, there are rarely any leftovers. Tithing means you give God your best, not the rejects. Our response to his best is our own best. Now, we know that there are many, many reasons for tithing. But the most important reason is tithing teaches you to put God first. Tithing teaches you to put God first. If you're taking notes this morning, that's the second point, not the first point. As I thought about it, I thought if we're actually putting God first, this needs to be the first point. So... If that confuses you, that's why. Look at Deuteronomy 14. 
The purpose of the tithe is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. Now, you would think as God's people, we wouldn't need to be taught to put God first in our lives. I mean, putting God first should be our response to the cross of Jesus, to the grace of God. However, we don't always respond the way that we know we should, do we? That's why we need to develop disciplines in our lives to help us to do what we already know is the right thing to do. See, it's always right for us to put God first. So when the first thing you do each day is to spend time in God's Word and prayer, you're putting God first. When you set aside the first day of the week and you faithfully come to church to worship God, you're putting God first. And you are putting God first when you take the first 10% of what God has entrusted to you and you give it to Him as an act of worship, as an act of loving obedience. Here's the thing. It takes faith to give to God first. Can we be honest about that? See, if God gives me $100 and I give him $10 first, it takes faith to believe that he's going to stretch the other $90. See, if I give him what's left over, if I give him what's last, if I give him what I feel like I want to give him, that doesn't take faith. And without faith, Scripture says, it's impossible to please God. Now, what some of you are probably thinking is, hold the phone. Before we get into this too much, Pastor Dan, for me to do that, for me to do the tithing like you're talking about, I mean, I'd have to make drastic changes in my life. Yeah, I understand that. You might say, for me to do that, I'd like to, I'm going to have to stop buying all those things that I want to buy. Yeah, I understand that. For me to do that, I would have to reprioritize my life completely around God. Yeah, you would. It's going to take sacrifice in your life to put God first. You see, tithing teaches you to put God first which is really what every Christ follower should want to do. According to the Bible, you have two choices. Two choices. You can either tithe to God or you can rob God. Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. I don't know about you, but I think those verses seem pretty clear. But some of you might argue back, but you don't understand the tithe. You see, the tithe is an Old Testament principle. The tithe was under the law, and we're not under the law anymore. You see, Jesus came to fulfill the law. Actually, that's not true. Jesus did come to fulfill the law, but the tithe was around before the law. But some people still say, oh, the tithe is Old Testament. The tithe isn't a New Testament principle. Jesus never mentions the tithe. Actually, Jesus does mention the tithe, and he clearly affirmed the tithe in Matthew 23, 23. Look at your your sermon note form. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. What sorrow awaits you, you teachers of the religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of law, justice of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. See, Jesus clearly teaches that all of God's people should tithe. Tithing has always been a normal practice for God's people, but at the same time, we do not neglect the more important things. In other words, yes, you tithe. That's for beginning givers. But don't forget the offerings. Don't forget the justice. Don't forget the mercy. Don't forget the widows. Don't forget the orphans. 
don't forget those people in need. Yes, you should tithe. That's where you start. And then you move on to the more important stuff beyond the tithe. So the tithe is where we start. Think about it this way. We know the Old Testament, it's an important part of the Bible, and it would set the standard for life in a lot of ways. However, in the New Testament, Jesus raises the standard every time. For example... The Old Testament says, don't murder. Jesus says, don't even hate. If you hate, you've committed murder in your heart. The Old Testament says, don't commit adultery. Jesus says, don't even lust. You do that, you've committed adultery in your heart. The Old Testament says, tithe. Jesus says, it's not just 10%. It's everything. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. Tithing provides for God's work through the church. Tithing provides for God's work through the church. God loves the church for which Christ died. God loves the church, and we should love the church. The local church is the hope of the world. That's why the scripture says in Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now, many theologians believe that the storehouse in the Old Testament is a picture of the New Testament church. In other words, when you tithe, the work of God through the church moves forward. Your money encourages God's work to expand by reaching people who don't believe in Jesus. Your money helps hurting people. Your money enables our kids and and youth to grow in Jesus and and to know Jesus and to follow Jesus through Sunday school and Iwana and Bible camp. Your money helps all of us to become more faithful followers of Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is the body of Christ on earth that is called to complete Jesus' mission to a lost and hurting world. As the local church, we are the hope of the world. So please remember that our church is, no, we're not supported by government subsidies or by area businesses, nor would we want to be. We are supported by your tithes and offerings. So I thought, well, what would it be like if we weren't? Just imagine for me, with me for a moment, what church would look like if we didn't tithe. Oh, who's speaking today? Senior pastor. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll meet you in the sanctuary. I gotta go. I gotta go. Boys, you have fun in class, and here's some craft money. Good morning. Bless you. Good morning. I'm all out. Bless you. Good morning. 
Good morning. <laughs> the church is so nice now that the senior pastor doesn't ask us to tithe anymore. What? I said... I guess we can always do church that way. I don't know. Aren't you glad we don't have parking meters out in the parking lot? or especially those coin slots by the bathroom doors. That just would not be good. And yet the truth is this. Everything has a price tag. Ministry costs money. Ministry facilities cost money. Ministry curriculum costs money. Ministry outreach costs money. Your tithing provides for God's work through the church. Your tithing builds your faith in God. You know, if we sat down and, I don't know, maybe we were over caribou, we're just going to have a cup of coffee, and, and one of the things you told me was, I'm just struggling with my faith in God. A fair question for me to ask is, are you a tither? And chances are you're going to say, no, because tithing actually builds our faith in God. It builds our trust. I want you to look at one of the most powerful and unusual promises in all of Scripture. Malachi 3.10. We looked at the first part of it. Let's look at the whole verse. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. See, this is the only place in all of Scripture where God tells us to put him to the test. He said, test me in this. He's saying, basically, I dare you to tithe and give me a chance to prove that I'm God. You tithe and I will provide more blessings that you can take in. Now, please hear me on this one. I am not preaching a health and wealth gospel. I am not saying if you tithe, God will make you rich. God is not some kind of cosmic slot machine. What I am saying is that God has some blessings that are far greater than just having more money. For example, when you take a step of faith and decide to tithe, God can turn your marriage around. Instead of fighting about money, you honor God with your money. You get out of debt. The pressure comes off. You joyfully give your first fruits to God, which leads to a closeness with God and a closeness with each other. See, God wants to build your faith and bless you through your tithing. That's God's nature and that's God's promise. He will throw open, it says, the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. You know, today, I want to talk to one of our young couples to see how tithing has worked in their lives. So I've asked Matt and Beth Stark to come up here and to join us. And I appreciate them doing that. You know, one of the things that we learned last year when we did our um, funding campaign for the building was that there are different parts of our faith story, just like, you know, what's your quiet time? How is that going? Or what are you learning from God lately? Tithing or giving is part of our faith story. So it makes sense to be able to openly and honestly talk about that. So I appreciate you guys being willing to come up here and be in the spotlight this morning. Hey, I just have a few questions for you. First question is this. When did you first hear about tithing or see it in action, and what was your initial response? Well, um, when we were young, we both saw our parents um, putting money in the offering plate. Um, 
we know they told us about it, but we didn't really understand it, and we didn't really get the importance of it until we were um, adults. So you kind of saw some kind of giving happening. You weren't sure on some of the particulars. Do you remember when you first heard about tithing itself? I know I'm not extremely old, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes remember in last week's a struggle. Now why, when you looked at me, you said, I know I'm not extremely old. I, anyway, we won't. Okay. Well, let me ask this question. How did you come to a place where you knew this was a step of faith that God wanted you guys to take? I'd say it's probably about four years ago or so. I know it was either right before or right after we got married. I don't know, it was just something click that just when we talked about it, it just, we decided it was something we had to do. So I know at that point, we started out small, just we figured, oh, we got to start somewhere. So we started giving, but I think the key thing that helped us is we gave every week. So then if we happened to be gone a week, we made up for it the next week. Then I think, too, it also, from a church standpoint, it helps keeps you accountable, keeps you in church every week, too, as well. Well, I mean, that would work. Hopefully it would. Okay, so, but up until that point, I know you had kind of talked about that before. You just kind of threw some cash in the, the plate whenever it hit you, but you thought we, you needed to give more regularly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was definitely before that when the offering plate would come around, it was more of a guilt thing. It was like, I don't want to be that person that doesn't put anything in there. I don't want to <laughs> be that guy. So that was kind of why, we did, why I felt like I did before. You don't so. want to throw in all the pennies and all that kind of clink around the plate? Yeah, make, okay. it, make it noisy. It's like, oh, I gave something at least. So. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. How has tithing been a blessing in your life, both financially and otherwise? I think a key thing for me that the easiest thing to look at and see is obviously the financial aspect of it. Being a small business owner, I could probably look back at my books and pinpoint when we started giving. Because once that happened our business just started growing exponentially. I mean, every year during the slow economy, we were growing. And as we, like I said in first service, we would see other businesses close. Well, it's like, I would sit there and think, it's like, oh, well, what are we doing different? And that was the only thing I could pinpoint to. So I think from there, definitely, uh, from that standpoint, it definitely helps. And then I guess the other thing is being self-employed, it would be easy for us to be really inconsistent with tithing because we don't have a guaranteed income each week that comes in. Um, however, we found it to be more the opposite where it's really taught us to trust and rely on God and that he will provide for us. I think also too that when things would grow in our business, we would feel led. It'd be like, now's the time we need to give more. But the funny thing was every time we gave more, all of a sudden more work would come in and make up for it. So then we'd have even more. So it was kind of a, we'd give a little bit, what we thought was a little bit, and all of a sudden we'd get a lot more in return. And I think another key thing too that helps is to realize that when you've realized that it's not yours, it's all his anyways, it makes it easier to give. And I know like the last verse you read, how it says, test me, or it says the only spot in the Bible where God says to test him. So I mean, once you, and it also says he loves a cheerful giver. So it's like, let's have fun with this. Let's keep giving. See what he does. See if you can outgive God. Yeah, try to uh, try. That's the key word. Try. To <laughs> I think that's awesome. So it sounds like, wow, the economy is going this way and your business is going that way. What a coincidence! Oh, it's not a coincidence. It's a step of faith. But I, I, I hear the financial part of it, but I also hear the emotional piece, where you're talking about just that peace of mind, knowing God's got it in control. Mm -hmm. You know what? Lord, it's your money. I'm not going to worry about this. We know that you're blessing us. We thank you, but we're going to be faithful. Okay, let me ask you this question. Final question. Would you recommend tithing to others today, to all these wonderful people sitting out here? And if so, why? I would have to definitely say yes. Just be from like I can say from experience, it works. Because I know, I know I shared in fir the first service, uh, a good thing that clicked for me, they call it the principle of sowing and reaping. And I know Mike Buer is here, any farmer can relate to it. There's three key steps to it. The first one is you reap what you sow. 
So like a farmer, if they plant corn, they're going to get corn back. So if you're sowing with financially with tithes, if you with tithes, if you sow money, you're going to get money back. If you sow time, somehow you're going to get time back. Then the second principle is you reap more than you sow. Because I know, sure, like with a farmer, if they only got back the seed that they planted in in equal numbers, there wouldn't be any farmers anymore. So yeah. your growth is more. So you sow a little, you reap a little. You sow a lot, you reap even more. And uh, the third one, which I think can be the key one, is that you reap later than you sow. Because you can't, like a farmer, they won't plant this week and expect to harvest next week. There's that growing season, then like with tithing, where God will build you and prepare you for the blessings that he has planned for you and just growing your faith. Uh, another uh, way I've heard it is, especially from it really clicked with me from being a business owner, is how it'd be like a business partnership. Except on this one, instead of 50-50, God says, I'll take 90% of the work, but when it comes time to get paid, he goes, I only want 10%. I mean, for somebody that's doing most of the work and only wants 10%, that seems like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> okay. I, I think this is, this is awesome because you guys, you've started out in life, your married life, your business life, and you have found God to be faithful. This is such an important lesson. There's some people that just really have struggled with this. So uh, we're, I'm excited. I'm excited for you and um, just excited for what God is doing in your lives. And I know that not only are you, are you doing this, but when you get the tithe piece for the money, you also get the time piece. I'm not even sure all the things you're involved with, but I know you're making a difference, and we just want to we appreciate it a lot. I also, too, want to add, or like if you're not currently tithing, I'd say you know what you're getting, doing it your way. Give it a try, give it a try God's way, see what happens. I mean, you always have the opportunity to go back to what you were doing if you don't think it's working for you. So, I think this guy could fill the pulpit, don't you think? Hey, can we thank these guys for coming up? Thanks, guys. I don't know. He's getting better every interview. Pretty soon he's going to take over. Did you get the three points on the sowing and reaping? I don't pretend to know how it all works. But I do know this. That 90% of my income with God's blessing goes a lot further than 100% of my income without God's blessing. And I know that that's the case for a lot of you folks here today. Unstrapped. You know, with these last three weeks, we've been looking at how money straps us all. We become slaves to our money, but it's not God's plan for any of his children. God has an abundant life that he wants each one of you to have, but you're not going to be able to live that life if you're continually strapped financially. God wants our marriages to thrive. He wants our families to be healthy. But that isn't going to happen if you're constantly buried in debt and fighting about money. And God has an urgent mission that he has entrusted to First Covenant Church. Knowing Christ and making him known. We are a mission station in a mission field. But we will not be able to fulfill that mission if we are strapped, if we're slaves to our money. You know, as we close out this important series, I just want to lead us all in a prayer. And I just want us to be honest with God because I think this is so important. I invite you to pray along with me silently. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Father, today we need to hear from you. When it comes to talking about money, most of us get pretty uncomfortable. When it comes to talking about tithing, some of us get really uncomfortable because we know what the Bible says, but we just don't know how we can afford to do it. Well, I pray your Holy Spirit would do a work in our hearts that only you can do. Today, I know we have some faithful tithers here who know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you for, for Matt and Beth sharing their story. People who have stepped out in faith and you have blessed them in amazing ways. But my prayer right now is for those wanting to tithe but needing encouragement to take this important step of faith. This is so important. 
for our spiritual development. It's a huge step of faith that, that helps us to worship you, God, by giving you our first and our best. So today, whether you are a tither or whether you are not, if this is a step of faith you have taken or a step of faith that you want to take, you know it's the right step, then I want to give you a chance to lift up your hands right now before God and say, God, I'm putting you first in my life through tithing. I am choosing to trust you more than my money. And as we're praying this morning, if that's something, is, if that is your commitment to God, right where you're sitting, I just want you to put your hand in the air. Go ahead, lift your hand and put it in the air. God, this is my commitment to you. I am choosing to trust you, not my money. And God, I thank you so much for all the people who take your word seriously, who have raised their hands, who are stepping out in faith. I know this is not an easy step. Help them. Help them to get out of debt and to manage their money wisely. Help them to tithe and give generously to the least of these in our world who need it the most here at home and all over this world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, as we come to the end of our service, I just want to invite the prayer leaders to come forward. Uh, just a reminder that that's a ministry we provide. God is a personal God who loves to answer prayer. And so if you have any needs or any concerns at all for you or someone in your family, as the service ends and we leave, just come forward and someone would just love to stand with you in prayer. Let me just say this, just two quick announcements, and then we're gone. Next week, we have a great opportunity. It's going to be unusual in the sense that our schedule is going to be different, so this is just a heads up. We're not having two services next week. We're having one from 9 to 10, and we're doing Walk Through the New Testament. How many were here for Walk Through the Old Testament a couple years ago? Quite a few of you? Yeah, it was a great one-day seminar where you get the big picture of how the Old Testament holds together. One of the things that the covenanters have always said, they've asked the question, where is it written? We need to know what God's Word says. This is a great way to give you a jump start on that for the New Testament. So next week, we worship from 9 to 10, have a coffee break. After that, the rest of the seminar, lunch, then the rest of the day. Believe me, it's worth your time. It's worth your money. $15 for a ticket. For families, there's special deals. But to get the big view of the New Testament, I encourage you to take advantage of it. The other announcement is Sunday, two weeks. Sunday, December 1st. What do you need to bring? A Sharpie, a, Sharpie, a marker. We're going to go to the new building after both services. We're going to write on the floors. We're going to put your favorite Bible promise or a Bible promise that you want for our ministry for the future in that new building. We want people to write it within the bounds. No, remember, no writing on the walls, just on the floor. But then we're going to cover it, and it's called Standing on the Promises. We're looking forward to two great Sundays coming up. Let me ask God's blessing on you. Would you stand for the benediction? Give thanks to the Lord, for His mercy endures forever. Amen. And have a great week.